The Spinosaurus, despite its numerous conflicting interpretations, is considered to be one of the deadliest dinosaurs to ever exist. Its enormous size, formidable claws, strong forearms, and its large, robust jaw full of sharp teeth all give credence to this dinosaur's ferocity as one of the strongest theropod predators of the entire Mesozoic. In fact, the only other dinosaur considered an equal to the Spinosaurus is the most popular dinosaur of all time, the Tyrannosaurus rex. However, these two apex predators never coexisted, with Tyrannosaurus rex inhabiting western North America and Spinosaurus living in North Africa and predating Tyrannosaurus rex by 30 million years. But an often forgotten and overlooked fact was that Spinosaurus was not the only apex predator of its habitat in North Africa over 93 million years ago. While Spinosaurus ruled the many marshlands and river systems, another apex predator roamed the landscapes of North Africa, and this was the Kakarodontosaurus. The terrible butcher of North Africa, this apex predator gets its name from its serrated shark-like teeth, used to tear flesh from prey, unlike the Tyrannosaurus rex, which hunted by relying on its bone-crushing power. The Kakarodontosaurus coexisted with the Spinosaurus thanks to niche partitioning of the available food ecosystems within North Africa. Where Spinosaurus specialised in predating on several large fish species like Sauerskate on Chopristus, Seal Canaf and Bichur Boetius, meanwhile Kakarodontosaurus predated on mainly herbivorous dinosaurs throughout the terrestrial landscapes. The first fossil of Kakarodontosaurus was found in early April 1914, from the Bahari Ria formation of North Africa. Political tensions between the German Empire and the British Empire, which occupied Egypt until 1956, prevented the fossil from being exported to the German city Munich until 1922. The fossils were described by German paleontologist Ernst Stromer in 1931, creating the genus Cacarodontosaurus, which translates to shark tooth lizard, noting the serrations and inherent sharpness of the teeth being very similar to the teeth of extant great white sharks. On April 24, 1944, this fossil was destroyed by a British bombing raid on Munich during World War II. However, an endocast of the fossil did survive the bombing, preserving this fossil discovery for later generations. Cacarodontosaurus belongs to the group Cacarodontosauridae. Named after its discovery in 1931 by Ernst Stromer, this group contains some of the largest theropod dinosaurs to ever exist, with members such as Giganotosaurus, Mapusaurus, Tyrannotitan, and Acrocanthosaurus. In recent paleontology, this family was redefined as a clade within Carnosauria, a broader group of carnivorous theropod dinosaurs containing the well-known Allosaurus, a close cousin to the Cacarodontosaurids. Only a single species of Cacarodontosaurus exists, named C. saharicus after its discovery in 1995 of the Lower Doria Formation or the Chemchem Beds of southeastern Morocco. In 2007, a second species named C. Iguidensis was unearthed in the Ekha formation of Iguidi, but was later found in 2016 that the recovered fossils actually belonged to a member of Spinosaurus. The Cacarodontosaurus could grow to an incredible size over 40 feet in length and weighing over 6 metric tons. This makes Cacarodontosaurus one of the largest theropod dinosaurs to ever exist, being the third largest Cacarodontosaurid outsized by the Giganotosaurus and Mapusaurus, and overall, the fifth largest megatheropod to ever exist. Spinosaurus, on the other hand, was significantly larger, reaching 46 feet and weighing 7.4 metric tons. This makes Spinosaurus the largest megatheropod to ever exist, even outsizing the Tyrannosaurus rex. This size difference would give a clear advantage to the Spinosaurus in terms of size and overall strength when confronting a Cacarodontosaurus. Cacarodontosaurus possessed a lightly built skull with an enlarged antorbital fenestra making up one third of the skull's length. 
While this opening would significantly reduce the skull's weight, this created a very fragile skull, ill-suited to strong bites and handling strong forces. The jaws of Kakarodontosaurus were lined with sharp serrated teeth that curved slightly inwards. These teeth were designed to slice through flesh, causing severe lacerations and high blood loss when attacking another dinosaur. The teeth were exceptionally long, reaching 6.8 centimeters or 2.7 inches in length, and were 3.5 centimeters or 1.4 inches wide. Like all other megatheropods, these teeth were the main weapon of Kakarodontosaurus. Although being shaped like knives, these teeth were quite fragile, being under a centimeter thick, a necessary trade off exchanging durability and strength for deep slicing lacerations. In total, a Kakarodontosaurus could have up to 62 sharp serrated teeth, and combined with a skull length of 1.6 meters, this created a deadly apparatus favoring quick movements of the skull and a deadly bite that inflicted deep lacerations onto any prey or other competitors. While its arms are not as small as Tyrannosaurus rex or the Carnotaurus, they are still significantly less developed than Spinosaurus' front arms, which were well developed, with large sharp claws ideal for slashing and swiping. It is unlikely Cacarodontosaurus would have utilized its arms for any combat purpose, as they would be useless in a fight, especially against other theropods. Within Northern Africa, the most dangerous competitor for the Cacarodontosaurus was indeed the Spinosaurus. The Spinosaurus's inherent greater size and more robust jaw paints a picture that the Spinosaurus would have an easy time outcompeting the Cacarodontosaurus. However, this did not occur. In fact, the Spinosaurus resigned itself to predation on large aquatic fish and did not migrate into other terrestrial hunting niches. This is likely due to Spinosaurus being less suited for pure terrestrial movement, with its high body weight poorly distributed across its skeleton frame, making walking difficult and likely preventing the fast movements needed for hunting terrestrial prey. The teeth of Spinosaurus were designed to capture the many slippery fish found within the rivers of North Africa over 94 million years ago, and would perform poorly on terrestrial prey, with the only benefit coming from the Spinosaurus's inherent size. This limitation prevented the Spinosaurus from competing with Cacarodontosaurus, being a victim of its own semi-aquatic lifestyle, preventing any niche expansion into more terrestrial opportunities. Other competitors include Delta Dromius, a carnivorous theropod reaching 26 feet and weighing 1,000 kilos. This dinosaur was significantly slimmer and smaller than both Cacarodontosaurus and Spinosaurus, likely relying on speed pursuit to catch prey. When looking at its smaller size and smaller developed jaws, this dinosaur would unlikely pose a threat to Cacarodontosaurus, behaving in a manner similar to today's cheetahs and lions in Africa. A cheetah uses its incredible speed to chase down prey, but also to avoid larger predators like the lion, which is more robust built and does not hesitate to use its larger size to kill any cheetah it may come across. Many crocodilians existed in North Africa during the late Cretaceous, but similar to today's habitats, it is unlikely that these crocodilians, such as Stomatosuchus, which could grow to 10 meters or 33 feet and had a skull length of 2 meters or 6.6 .6 feet, would have posed any threat to Cacarodontosaurus, as these marine reptiles would have behaved almost identical to today's crocodiles of Africa, residing within river systems and not having the adaptions necessary to hunt on land. Instead, they likely would have competed with Spinosaurus due to niche overlap. Cacarodontosaurus inhabited North Africa 99 to 94 million years ago. North Africa in this time was a part of the supercontinent Gondwana and bordered the Tethys Sea, which would later become the modern Indian Ocean and Mediterranean Seas of the modern world. This transformed North Africa with many dense mangroves, marshlands, tidal flats, and numerous river systems along the flat plains of the area. The region experienced a monsoon season, a period where dense rainfall would occur, 
this annual wet season created the many river deposits that supported a great diversity of large fish species and subsequently many marine predators such as the Spinosaurus and many other crocodilians. The terrestrial landscape consisted of large flat plains with dense rainforests. This created an environment that favoured both ambush predation tactics and pursuit predation. The Cacarodontosaurus likely hunted along these flat plains and within the dense rainforests of North Africa, predating on indeterminate dinosaurs such as iguanodonts, ornithopods, dromaeosaurids, and ankylosaurs. Species belonging to these groups are still indeterminate, however fossil excavations indicate that members of these groups did exist and likely formed the main diet of Cacarodontosaurus. By using its longer and more flexible neck, Cacarodontosaurus would deliver a series of lacerating bites, causing severe blood loss and preventing the prey dinosaur from fleeing as every additional step would only accelerate the blood loss process. This hunting method likely would have been effective on the many sauropods that inhabited North Africa, such as Aegyptosaurus and Perellet Titan, with Perellet Titan reaching an exceptional length of 27 meters and weighing 30 metric tons. The Cacarodontosaurus would target young and juvenile sauropod members, separating them from the herd, and deliver a series of lacerating bites, designed to cause blood loss and drain the sauropod of its energy. After sufficient time would have passed, the sauropod would collapse from exhaustion, becoming an easy meal for the Cacarodontosaurus. It is very unlikely that the Cacarodontosaurus hunted by outmuscling its prey due to the frail nature of its skull and the orientation of its teeth being poorly designed for lateral movement. Instead, the longitudinal orientation of the teeth strongly favours the use of quick rapid bites into its prey where the elongated and serrated teeth would slice deep into the flesh, producing severe lacerations and blood loss. These teeth would not be able to break through bone as their fragile design would break when hitting a stronger material. The Carcharodontosaurus went extinct about 94 million years ago, coinciding the exact same time that the Spinosaurus also went extinct. Due to the different hunting niches of these dinosaurs, this implies that a drastic change occurred within North Africa that no longer favoured the large theropod dinosaurs. Other members of the Cacarodontosauridae family, like the Giganotosaurus and Maraxus, also went extinct 94 million years ago, with Mapusaurus being the last survivor, going extinct 89.6 million years ago. The Cacarodontosaurus would be replaced by smaller Abelisaurids, which required lower amounts of food due to their smaller size and so could survive the sudden changes occurring within their environment. The most popular and well-known Abelisaurid is the Carnotaurus, which appears 71 million years ago within South America. The Cacarodontosaurus is a unique dinosaur that is often overlooked in favour for more popular megatheropods. The unfortunate fact is this dinosaur's only real fame is being associated with the Spinosaurus. However, many people overlooked the fact that it was the Cacarodontosaurus that completely dominated the terrestrial hunting niches of North Africa and was the fifth largest megatheropod to ever exist. The Cacarodontosaurus was merciless in its hunting, by inflicting deep lacerations into its prey which would quickly bleed out, making even one bite an instant death sentence. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, then remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. But finally, make sure to have a great day and thank you for making it all the way to the end. In 2007, a second species named C. iguidunensis. Igua. I forgot. So how do you say that? Ig. Guide. Nince.